Hi, I'm Pat Farnack, and today we're talking to Rafe Gomez, who is the author of The Retirement Coach, and also the creator of a syndicated radio show called Rock Mix. Yes, it's the world's first rock mashup mix show. All right. And it's spelled Rock Mix, R-O-C-K-M-I-X-X. -X. That's two X's in the mix of Rock Mix for twice the excellent. Right? <laughs> Well, great. I was going to say, we'll have that as a soundtrack yeah, behind sure. what we're really talking about today, which is the rehirement coach. And uh, what what is this exactly? It's a book, but it's also an audio book as well, right? right? It's, uh, the website is therehirementcoach.com. The actual name of the book is What's In It For Me, uh, a powerful new interview strategy to get you hired in today's challenging economy. It's a downloadable audio book. Uh, I wanted to make it available as an audio book for speed. If I tried to make a print book out of it, I would have been shopping around for a year. So uh, I uh, created it, and now it's available uh, on audible.com. But if you go to the retirementcoach.com, it's an easier way to, uh, to get to Audible, and you'll learn exactly what it's all about. Well, fantastic. And we'll have a link. Uh, Evan Bindleglass is here. He's our web producer, and he'll make sure that I'll uh, have a link to your website you, from ours, WCBS880.com. <laughs> all right, Rafe, you seem to be a, a happening radio guy. Well, happening. <laughs> get those big ding-dings on. Happening yeah, radio sure. guy. How did you... Uh, get to this point in your career where you are doing the rehirement coach? Failure. Uh, I uh, was on the air. I had a nationally syndicated jazz radio show, which was on the air in New York on CD 101.9. Remember them? Mm -hmm. uh, it was called The Groove Boutique. It was a Saturday night jazz mix show. Very cool mix of uh, cocktail jazz and bossa nova and Latin jazz. It was on the air for five years. Number one listened to in the market. And it made a whole lot of great uh, opportunities available for me. I did some hosting on QVC. I did some production of some jazz uh, recordings with um, Smokey Robinson, some jazz versions of his music. Um, I was DJing at jazz festivals around the country for thousands and thousands of people. And I didn't realize that all of those wonderful opportunities were tethered to the existence of the radio show. So in 2008, CD 101.9, looking to generate more revenue, flipped formats, and I was done. But I thought, well, I, I still have my other markets that are running the show, and I still have all of these great opportunities. But no! <laughs> no. <laughs> Guess what? You were mistaken. I was rather mistaken, because <laughs> it all imploded. And then one market after the next started flipping in the smooth jazz format, so that was that. And I had to... Uh, figure out what, what am I going to do? Reinvent next? yourself. Reinvent, uh, re just tread water uh, mm -hmm. because I had bills to pay. Um, I have two kids, I'm married, and I, I needed to make something happen. So I had a wonderful resume. I started speaking to radio companies about, hey, here's, here's what I've done, what do you think? And it was just no, 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 no. One, one after that. We like what you do, very nice, but no. And the, t the clock was ticking. Uh, I, I needed to find something. And I started realizing that what I'm doing in terms of how I'm interviewing, there's something wrong here. This is not working. Uh, I, I'm, I've gone to the websites. I've bought the books. I've stood in, stayed in Barnes & Noble taking all the notes, you know, with that whole section of, of self sure. career. Uh, I've gone to the seminars. And it, it, it just, it, it didn't work. It, it wasn't coming together. And I started then thinking back, okay, what worked for me, for instance, when I was on QVC, I was selling and doing very well. I was selling tens of thousands of, of CDs at five in the morning, of jazz CDs. And what made that work was I was using a strategy. The strategy was based on a sales strategy by a guy named Lee Boyan. Lee Boyan is a sales trainer. He works with he had worked with salespeople around the world, and he boiled down the sales process to three things. He said, if you are going to close a prospect, you need to be able to prove that your product or service can make them money, save them money, or improve the image of their corporation in the marketplace. Or in the case of QBC, improve the life of the viewers. And that worked, because I wasn't speaking about what I thought of the music. I was speaking about, hey, here's great jazz for when you're cooking dinner. Here's great jazz for when you have those romantic encounters, when you have people over. I was emphasizing the what's in it for you. This is what you get out of the music. 
So where I might be thinking about the production or the, re the, re the recording, where it was done, the musicians, people don't care about that unless you're a purist. They are thinking, what's in it for me? Why should I do this? How is this going to make my life? Uh, but, you know, in this me generation where yes. me, 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 and, and you're fantastic, and I'm special, and what do I bring to the table? I mean, that certainly is important when you are at an interview, but they don't want to know about you, you, you. They want to know what's in it for them. Exactly. What are you going to do for them? What are you going to do to benefit my organization? You went to a top school. You worked for a blue chip firm. That is great. But... If you can't explain to me why you're going to or how you're going to make my company money, save my company money, or improve its image in the marketplace, I don't need you. So if you went to Rafe Gomez Community College, mm -hmm. uh, but in your last job you were a home run hitter, you just delivered, 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 I'm going to hire you because right now in this economy I need to deliver results. There's no such thing as a vanity hire anymore who is going to be brought on because, hey, I just brought this guy on. He's, he's super duper. He did this, and he went, went here. and he, If you don't have the goods, you ain't getting the gig. And, you know, uh, when, when I interviewed you before, you talked about getting specific. In yes. other words, uh, this is what I did. When I did middays, uh, my, uh, I increased uh, revenue for the station by... 20%. Yep. I mean, that's something tangible. That's something that you can hang your hat on. Right. And I can do that for you. I see that you have an opening in middays. I could yes. I could bring that to your station. That's exactly for example. right. So when I started interviewing I, and I came up with the idea of rock mix, I didn't speak about me as a groovy DJ and the kind Although of... Although you are. Wow, that's you know, debatable <laughs> depending upon how many beers you've had. But um, <laughs> I was talking about, okay, I've got this new show, Mr. Radio Station. Here's how I'm going to make you money. Here's how I'm going to save you money, and here's how I'm going to improve the image of your station in the marketplace. Now, stations and, and general managers hadn't heard a presentation like that before. All they heard was, hey, you got a groovy, got a groovy show, check it out. Mm -hmm. So I was approaching it in a completely different way, and that's what made my latest job as the host and DJ of Rock Mix possible, because I was able to entice stations with fact, 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 fact. I can talk about PPM, which is the new measurement system in radio, yes. and how this show improves it. I can talk about the many ways that what I do can generate money for them in ways they never had before. I can talk about how I could do uh, television appearances uh, on their local morning shows, and, and that's free media for them. So this was a t totally different thing that they had never heard before, and that's what made it possible. So now, when people are going into job interviews, they have to have that mentality. They have to not just go in and put their resume down and say, so, how about that? They need to <laughs> Which be, you used to be able to do. Right, when in, there were lots the of day. jobs. When there were lots of jobs yes. and companies had lots of money to build their all-star teams, they would take you in a minute. And if they didn't, you knew there were five other companies you could interview with that were going to give you a compensation package that was as good as, good as if, if not better, than what you had. So that's the way you used to be able to do it. Done. Not anymore. Well, Rafe, uh, this sounds like it's uh, heavy on the preparation, though. Uh, we're, we're not just Googling uh, Station XYZ no. or uh, Company uh, ABC. You really have to do your homework. You have to do your homework, Pat, but it's not about just going to the website. You want to go into the news section, the in the news section, the media section. Read their press releases. What are they trying to do? Where have they had success? Where have they had challenges? Are they expanding? Are they contracting? Then you can go to, sta to, to websites like vault.com, hoovers.com. What's it like to work there? Who's who? Who are the power players? What are they trying to achieve? You can even go to the Wall Street Journal website or the New York Times and try to see if there are articles written about these companies. Then call the journalist. Email the person who wrote it and say, hey, read this piece, loved it. I have some questions for you about your research. Now you're learning the answers to the test. And not only that, you you are getting energized, and that has to uh, uh, bleed over, as it were, during any kind of interview. Somebody's going to definitely pick up on that. You're going to uh, be a, a leg, arm, head <laughs> up on anybody else.